It is my great pleasure to open uh, this online Congress of Oracle 2020, our favorite year, I guess. <laughs> and uh, yes, and uh, together with our absolutely phenomenal partners, Lokomotiva from Skopje, Macedonia, uh, we are officially opening a three day long session full of um, different ideas, different topics. Uh, we hope we hope that they will be a bit edgy, a bit provoking to to uh, to think about where we are and what can we do. My pleasure today is also to yes, Jean Pierre would like to add something or just saying hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, um, it is my pleasure to open with a few sh short presentation and few words about Oracle Cultural Network, as not all of you are familiar with it, and those who uh, who are very much familiar with our network, um, I would like to remind you a bit. Um, we, we've collected few information from our history. I think it's nice to take a look where we came from and where we are now. So let me share the screen. So here we are, Division, the 2020 Congress, and we start with a few words about the network itself. Uh, those of you who are not very familiar with Zoom, I recommend that you can uh, click on the bottom, on the top of the view of us, of speakers, and then you can see the full um, slide. So our photos, our, our videos will not um, interact with the, uh, the text on the slide. So who we are, we are a network of individuals, and this is uh, what makes us different from other networks. We do not represent our institutions, although we sometimes very happily cooperate with them. Uh, but we are a network um, that is uh, be became kind of a huge international pan-European pan family because most of us did program called European Diploma in Cultural Project Management. And uh, after finishing the studies, graduating this course, uh, there is a huge need to stay in touch, to do something together, to work together. We create, we try to create a dynamic community and we work as, like I said, as individuals. So we decide uh, on our progress and future uh, actions as uh, basically private people who are uh, really engaged and um, feel the need to change something in the world around us. European Diploma, maybe Jean-Pierre will tell you a bit more about it. I wanted to put the link to the website here to show you how to find um, information about future uh, future sessions and the next year's course. Uh, this is a huge international pan-European pan training started in 1989. Uh, like you can see, uh, mainly from for people from Europe, but also Mid Middle East, Canada, Senegal, etc., etc. More than 30, 50 countries uh, as far, and uh, this is type of nomadic studies, which means that we uh, meet on uh, during each session. We meet in different country, usually different culture, and most of us come from different country and different culture each year. So you can imagine every idea, every um, way of doing things you can have is immediately um, discussed and sometimes immediately thrown away by people who come from different backgrounds. And this makes us 
firstly, more open, secondly, more brave. And uh, for me personally, uh, um, more uh, aware of what are the consequences of my actions and what are the needs of people who come uh, with completely different, uh, not only background, but also uh, aims and goals. Uh, Oracle Cultural Network is, uh, like I said, created mostly by and for um, graduates of European okay. Diploma. Uh, yes? Sorry? <laughs> um, but not only this, during this session, last day of the session, we hope to announce uh, a way to join our network without graduating the diploma, although this is the, the easiest way. Um, for now, uh, we've counted, we have 495 eligible members for, from 50 countries, and we listed those countries here. Uh, so as you can see, it's quite impressive. Of course, not all of them are active, but as graduates of European Diploma, they are all eligible to join the network anytime they feel uh, this is something I want to do. Uh, once again, uh, I hope that by the end of the session, we will be able to present you another way to become our member, but for now it has to remain a surprise. Uh, Oracle meetings uh, are the biggest and most important part of our uh, year to year uh, activity. We try to meet every single year in different country, in different city. Uh, and uh, share ideas, dream up, I like this, this term, and create this genuine intercultural exchange between us and uh, as persons, as people, as friends, but also uh, our ideas and, and possible future cooperations within each other, with each other. So, um, Every session we try to question and not assume. We try to uh, really think about positive social and artistic cultural change. And we try to ask different questions, sometimes difficult questions, as you will see during this following days. Uh, we will talk a bit later about the agenda for this year. Um, each year is um, focused on one theme uh, and it's always relevant to the situation we see and the needs we see in nowadays world. Previous meetings, this is something I, I really wanted to share with you. Uh, just take a look how many places uh, the network has visited uh, throughout those years since 1994 in Krakow in Poland. For me personally, as a, as a person from Poland, it's, it's really uh, nice to see that it's all started here and we go on throughout, not only uh, Europe, but also far, far above to Casablanca even and now Skopje 2020. I'm really sorry we can't be there personally. I love Macedonia, but I'm also grateful that we, we are able to, to do this together. So uh, it's another year for us and a lot, a lot more to come. So here we are online and we will be talking about the vision or the vision without this dots uh, in, in the middle. And what does it mean? What does it mean for us? Uh, later on, we will ask, what does it mean for you? Uh, when we are thinking about the theme, we realize that this is the biggest issue in modern societies, uh, not only in Europe. We can see this clearly in United States. We can see it even more clearly in Middle East and, and, and Africa and other Basically, every culture nowadays is divided in some way. Uh, we can see division uh, in uh, very common now in 
in Europe, uh, right versus left uh, visions of uh, and values of life, uh, territory driven versus ethnically driven cultural policies, um, government versus civil actions, institutional now versus civil sector. Uh, so we are divided as people, we are divided as nations, we are divided as cultures, and we see less and less useful and fruitful dialogue between each other. And this is something we decided is needed to be tackled right now and needed to, um, to be heard, not only with, within small groups of people, we tend to work from the, on day to day basis, but we, we wanted to show it to the public and share our, our thoughts and listen to your ideas. Uh, I will not uh, take you uh, take, take much longer of, the, of your time. I wanted to say thank you, but not for listening to me. Uh, I wanted to use this opportunity to say thank you to all the people who created this session. Uh, I think it's amazing job and this is my only opportunity to, to stand up and, and say it. Um, I would like to thank especially Lokomotiva with Biliana and Violetta and re recent days Nenad. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to Oracle Board. I wanted to say thank you to Robert Alajazowski for his ongoing support and to other people who shared with us their ideas who signed up for the session and participated and, and are going to participate in following days and events. So with this photo with us last year, our, our um, network members looking up, uh, symbolically we're looking up for the future, for the next year. And uh, I welcome you to join our website. Uh, you will find contacts to us and uh, news about uh, every future activity we will announce. Now I can thank you for listening to me and um, give the floor to Jean-Pierre Deroux. Uh, is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it yes, okay? we can hear you. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Marta. Well, friends, I am very, very, very happy to be here without being here, of course. And that's a, a sadness because uh, in you know, all our di European diploma or all activities, we are obsessionally uh, live people, live, live meetings. Uh, this humanity is, uh, of course, uh, diminished a lot with this uh, distance system. It's a plan B, plan X, plan Y, plan, plan Z <laughs> to do it like that. But at least it happens. So it's, uh, it's really great that uh, Oracle finally could manage with a locomotiva. Uh, and I'm very happy about that. So now, to be uh, a bit blunt, I would say we are in deep shit. Uh, the situation is absolutely catastrophic everywhere in the world uh, because of this uh, animal pandemic. Uh, but I really believe that, as I said, for at the very beginning of this pandemic, I said it's harming as much democracy as it's harming health. Uh, and I think it's really something we have to keep in mind all the time because it's not by coincidence that it happens. Uh, we are in a situation in the world where, uh, for instance, this obsessional uh, consumerism, where people have to buy things, buy things, throw things away, uh, be in a planet of obsolescence, uh, being in a fashion obsessional logic where you have to change everything every, every single day. Uh, destroying the nature, all that makes it impossible to survive normally. It's absolutely clear for me. So the, what is at stake is much, much, much bigger than something which is just health. 
because also this situation is um, has got very very bad and very good sides very bad sides because of course it's uh, uh, enabling all the dictators all the populists all the complotists uh, all these people uh, which happens uh, in china in turkey uh, uh, but also in Europe, uh, in the Poland for the moment, in uh, Hungary, uh, and even in, in countries which are supposed to be very democratic, uh, there is also a diminishing of the, of the democracy. So it's a, it's a global huge problem. We have to be aware of that and uh, we have to play a role in that. But at the same time, I really believe that any kind of crisis uh, is an opportunity, is an opportunity to change things and to, uh, to, to jump uh, in a new logic, in a new, more human, more democratic logic. Uh, and I think that for that culture, as my friends from uh, Casablanca say always, culture is the solution. Uh, it's a bit pretentious, but I think it's quite right, quite true actually, because we are, uh, we have to be the ambassador of a uh, civilization in a way, because I think if we remain in our little ivory tower of cultural people or artists, uh, we are going to miss the train, the very, very, very important train that we have to take now. Uh, we have to be in a big logic of um, partnership and, uh, and civil civil system. We have to be in the societies very, very active, much more than we were and what that we still are, I think. Of course, there are some great examples, but globally speaking, I really believe that the cultural world is not enough involved in the society. Uh, and for that, we have to take risks. Uh, I think we are probably our best censors. Auto-censorship is the best censorship. Uh, we have to take risk. Of course, taking risk means that you may have problems. But at the same time, I think we very often exaggerate the problems. And also sometimes we have to, uh, to fight for, to fight for rights, to fight for democracy, to fight for culture, to fight, fight for creativity. Uh, this is for me absolutely necessary. And also, I think this logic of partnership, we are in that in the diploma since the very beginning in the cultural cooperation, because uh, one of the diseases is also these stereotypes we put on other peoples, uh, the idea that some culture would be superior than others, or people would be superior, which is uh, perfect bullshit, of course. Uh, but we have to share and to support the ones who need more. Uh, that's why I am very happy that, for instance, in this uh, Oracle meeting, uh, there is something uh, on, on that level, for instance, with um, Racine, uh, with the, 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 the fight of the women in Poland, which is really a, a very, very, very important fight. So this is showing the way that we have to do, and we don't do it enough. We have to do not necessarily in politics. I don't, I don't believe in that. I've never been in a party in a way, but at the same time in politics on the Greek sense of the term, on the citizens logic, uh, fighting for their rights and fighting for the rights of the others. Uh, this is something we have to do absolutely. And for that, I think the partnership we have with uh, other cultural people from other countries is one of the keys. Another key for me is uh, to be transversal. For instance, uh, it's very difficult to be fully cultural people involved in the society if we don't have uh, contacts and cooperation with people working in the, in the field of, uh, of uh, sustainable development or in social fields. Uh, I think all that is linked in a way, and uh, that's why, and it's urgent, it's very urgent. We, we cannot wait uh, 20 years before deciding to do that. Uh, we have to be the forefront of the fight. We have to be the fighters. 
So um, this is what we do actually, <laughs> unfortunately in training, very few organization or universities or training programs do that. Uh, I'm, I'm very sad that universities, for instance, that started in the very beginning to be discutations, they, they called it in Paris or in Bologna or things like that. Uh, this, this kind of a very deep discussion between professors and students. And they were not at the same level, but they were really open. It was not a top-down system. And, and the university became, unfortunately, very much a top-down system. Of course, there are exceptions, as always. Uh, you will listen to my best friend, uh, Milena, who is a not normal professor because she's very excited about what's happening all over the world. I could bring her even when we went to Finland in Lapland, for instance, and I think that no other so-called expert would have been doing that in a night train, uh, uh, meeting reindeers and uh, Sami people. <laughs> so uh, it exists, but still globally speaking, uh, the disease of uh, lots of training program are first the top-down system, the ones who know and the idiots who are supposed to listen to the ones who know. Uh, and the second thing is that it's more and more business logic. Uh, it's, uh, uh, my, my, I was talking with Franco Bianchini, for instance, and he was telling me when he was in Leeds University, he had to spend half of his time uh, to make budget, uh, to find money, uh, to, to, to buy uh, students and so on. So I think training, and I think informal training is a, is a very, very, very crucial element to enable, uh, especially youngsters or young artists or young cultural managers to understand the global picture and to be active in the global picture. And that's what we are trying to do. I'm very pretentious, but this time I will not be too pretentious. Uh, we are trying to do, and sometimes we are really doing it. It means that uh, in, a, in a process of destabilization, because I really believe that we need to have operational concepts to fight, uh, to understand, to, to win the fights uh, against the dragons and all these uh, kind of people. And um, this destabilization process enables the people to be in a position to really co cooperate. Because otherwise, most of the time, cooperation is a fake cooperation. It is a cooperation where the ones who have the networks, who have the money, who have the knowledge and so on, are dominant. And the other ones are subcontractors or slaves. Uh, so the destabilization process is absolutely necessary. And also the nomadism, uh, as Marta was uh, mentioning, this nomadism is very, very important. That's why I was fighting like a dog to do this year, for instance, the two sessions, residential sessions we had in Croatia and in Portugal, to have them on site. Even uh, if I have to fight because some of the partners, good partners, but still a bit afraid to try to, to, uh, to take the risk, uh, we're not very hot about doing that. But we did it. The first uh, session in Croatia was postponed and we, uh, we had half of the people who were online. And then I told them, for the second session, if you don't come, there will be no uh, Zoom session. So then bye-bye. I'm sorry, but it's like that. So they all came. And they, they discover, of course, that it, that is the magic is happening. It's uh, uh, by Zoom, they had maybe one third of the input and on, on the excitement. And all the informal elements are so, 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 so important. I think sometimes we have to have lectures. I'm, I'm afraid of that, but it, it happens. Uh, and I even do it sometimes myself, which is a disaster. Uh, but, but the most important is the informal interactive logic and uh, putting the people in a situation where you have to understand other logics and understanding other logic, confronting the logics, they're able to grow and to make real, fruitful, extraordinary cultural cooperations.
And to understand the logic of taking risk, I would just give you one of my, my example. Why, why, for instance, I'm so obsessional about this thing of taking risk and, uh, and fighting the dragons. Uh, it's uh, when I was in Congo, instead of the military service, uh, I was uh, teaching in a, in a secondary school in the bush, very far away from any kind of city or anything. And Congo was uh, totally corrupt. I think this colonization made uh, terrible uh, wounds. Uh, and this, this, uh, this corruption was uh, killing everything. So uh, they pro proposed me everything to have uh, their kids uh, to succeed. Uh, it was meaning uh, bottles of beers, uh, guns, uh, my little sister, everything. Uh, and I understood immediately that if I would accept anything, anything, all my system of saying, you don't have to be in corruption. You have to fight for your right. You have to become great kids, but no corruption. So one day they blocked me, the, the, the army, they blocked me in a dirt road and they uh, wanted to steal the, what was the content of the Jeep. And I said, no, no. And then they wanted less and less and less. And finally they wanted one pack of cigarettes. And I said, no. And then they made me dig my grave. And then, <laughs> then finally I was totally uh, nuts. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, I could have been killed for a pack of cigarettes, uh, which would have been a bit stupid. I, I admit that. But at the same time, finally, it was the best lesson I had in my life because uh, I didn't dig the whole grave, hopefully, uh, and then I could run away because somebody knew me and uh, they, 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 they called the military police. But it was the signal that taking the risk is less risky than not taking the risk. I mean, for the value of your life and the value of citizenship and the value of cultural democracy. Because I think we have to be, it should be our, our kind of Bible, this cultural democracy system. because. That's like that, that we can grow and we can uh, uh, become better humans, better cultural people, better artists. So if you have uh, anything, we are always ready uh, to be in touch. And if you want to send people to the diploma, do it. It's the most fantastic thing in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Pierre, uh, for always uh, inspiring and motivating speech uh, included with uh, very interesting stories that happened to you, uh, put it in the agenda of the, this Congress uh, dealing with the divisions, uh, a polarity in, in the society which we are living, which reflect not only culture, but as you said, the culture is the base of the society. So we are opening the polarities in culture field, but not only, more in the uh, civil society sphere, also in the sphere of human rights. So we will have different sessions dealing with these uh, questions of access, equal opportunity, solidarity, etc. I uh, thank you, Marta, for a uh, good introdu introduction of the Oracle Network and uh, also the opening of the session. It was uh, really nice working with you and thanks uh, for giving us this opportunity to be a partner in organizing the 22nd uh, International Oracle Congress. Uh, I will start with the presentation of Locomotiva uh, and I will start sharing screens. So Locomotiva is uh, always uh, uh, inspired to deal with the difficult questions and the burning questions in the field of culture. And now with uh, my colleague uh, Biljana Tanurovska Kulavkovsky, um, uh, we will try in the very short presentation to bring you what we have, uh, let's say, done or reach or created or tried to create it in the last almost 16, 18 years. So Locomotiva will go to, un to university soon, even though it's number in age, still it's small in people uh, in the context that we are uh, working on, but uh, very, very active in all the fields of culture in the society. So let's uh, see this screen sharing.
I hope it works. Yes, it's fine. You have to put the full screen. I put it full screen. Uh -huh. It's fine now? Yeah? Yes. Okay, thank you. Locomotiva Center for New Initiatives in Arts and Culture. So I will start and we will in parallel for different session sharing our talk with uh, Biljana. Um, so it's funded 2003 in Skopje, Macedonia. It is a non-profit organization and it's a really open platform for education, reflection, production, research in contemporary arts and culture, opening uh, really also discurs discursive program for, sh for sharing the experience, but also for presentation of new works um, and um, creations. Uh, so this is a platform which is uh, having this role of platform which is dedicated towards the cultural workers, towards the artists, towards the constituents of the organization and on the other side towards the citizens through its work it wants to really uh, widen the access of citizens to art and culture through different programs and cultural events that uh, are developed and implemented uh, within the organization uh, and to support the contemporary dynamic cultural field uh, and uh, contemporary art, which is, as we already mentioned several times, a base for development of democratic society. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, practically the organization uh, is very active in uh, or working on the base of collaboration, which means collaborating with local artists and advocating for the positive changes and support the cultural work on the local level through uh, very um, involving uh, different uh, cultural actors and institutions from regional and international uh, context, which means that the work has very regional and international dimension, but also dealing with the local issues. So it's most um, known for uh, its work in the field of contemporary performing arts, arts which means including all the aspects of uh, this field, uh, dance, choreography, performance, post drama theater and music, very much active in advocacy activities, dealing with uh, research and creation of cultural policies, uh, but also uh, dealing with the uh, uh, conditions of work of cultural workers and the cultural and uh, working rights of freelance artists. Uh, develops different models of informal education in contemporary theory practice that is implemented through different educational programs, summer schools, presentation lectures, etc. So uh, 2018 we were also partners to European Diploma, so part of the uh, sessions were held also here in Skopje in Kino Cultura, develops research on cultural policies and contemporary arts and culture and new models of governance in culture, for which uh, Liana uh, will talk more uh, through the model of uh, Kino Cultura project space. So briefly in this year, I will mention a few of the most important projects or programs, co-founder of Nomad Dance Academy project network, still working and very active, co-founder of Yadra Association of Independent Cultural Workers in Macedonia, but also the same platform on the regional level, uh, called Cooperativa, uh, which is uh, embracing the countries from the region of ex-Yugoslavia, co-founder of Locomotion Festival with eight editions, very successful partner and co-organizers in uh, two, five years European projects, Light on Burning and um, Jardin d'Europe, co-funded within the program of culture of the European Union and currently uh, three new projects within um, two within the Creative Europe program. It's Art Climate Transition or ACT project. We will be implemented until 2024. Uh, the new project, which was uh, which will start next year, uh, and it was in the frame of Creative Europe Western Balkan. Call it's called Non-Aligned Movement. 
Mountains, which is practically a project of the Nomad Dance Academy partners. And currently in the field of education and curating in the contemporary dance um, or performing arts, we have the Curating in Context uh, supported by Erasmus Plus project. So practically uh, one of the um, most important actions uh, in the recent years was forming of Kino Cultura project space for contemporary performing arts and uh, contemporary culture in partnership with theater navigator Svet Svetko. Uh, and uh, as organization working in the performing arts, but not only, it's always, uh, but also what is, uh, it's always need a space to present uh, or create works. Uh, and this space was enabled to Kino Kultura as a project space, which kind of give us a chance to form different kind of long terms of programs uh, within uh, Kino Kultura as project space, uh, which are continuing now on. So I will mention a few of them. Uh, plus Platform for Contemporary Performing Arts, Contemporary Choreography and Dance, Art politics, Institution and Body, and Contemporary Culture and Cultural Policies, which are all comprising within um, educational programs, production, co-production, and platform. And we will, through at the end, through different images, we will bring you some of the activities that are realized in this program. So I will stop here. Diana, please. Um, Continue. Thank you, Violeta. I will continue and we will shift. Uh, and uh, this is in Cyrillic Kino Cultura. And uh, it's the name of the project space uh, that we started, as Violeta said, uh, in 2015, together with another organization, Theater Navigator Cvetka. And because I ha don't have this um, possibility to go further, I will say next slide. Uh, so, <laughs> Just uh, just to, uh, to say that um, Kino Cultura is a space uh, that was formed because of the need uh, in the contemporary performing arts, uh, theater, dance choreography performance, to have a space where um, possibilities for development will uh, grow or the space where these fields uh, or this kind of artistic uh, creations will be nurtured. Uh, what we did, uh, we couldn't find uh, the partnered uh, public uh, space or we couldn't find the space that uh, the city or some local municipality or the state would uh, give it to us so we can co-govern together with our partners. Therefore, we were searching all over the city and we found uh, different spaces. And this space, which was an old cinema, was the most uh, suitable, let's say, for our activities. So we just rented uh, part of this building with the aim to, uh, to, to advocate that this building should become a space for independent cultural scene. Uh, but uh, did, uh, this didn't happen. However, we had happy four years in this space and this space for us become an idea that will continue further, I will say. And as uh, this is uh, how we started, it's with uh, four program lines we developed. One is uh, by each of uh, our organizations. Our programs of Locomotiva and Theater Navigator were curated, but when, then we opened two programs which are uh, for the partners large, in a larger civil society and for the community. So we had the uh, program open space uh, in collaboration with other organizations that are part of cultural but also larger civil sector individuals and other groups. And then uh, together which was program uh, of animation and development uh, in which the community or the citizens uh, in the near surrounding or larger surrounding were, uh, were uh, engaged. So, however, we had a large uh, type of activities. Uh, here you can see the numbers, more of 100 events. And then the next slide, probably. Uh, here we have uh, a different partnership with this uh, program and space, what we did. You see the picture. Uh, which was on the next slide. 
<laughs> with uh, the uh, Simon uh, Cardun. Uh, he is the director of Kino Shishka, that we did the collaborative uh, uh, agreement in which they were um, lending, not lending, but giving us uh, a possibility to use their technical uh, equipment, which uh, they were donating this. Uh, this part also is how the building uh, looks like. Uh, and we had only the part of the building, as I said, the old cinema space. And this was a huge and nice 10 to 12 uh, space. Maybe in the next uh, photos here, you can see how it looked like. And we can scroll now just to see the few photos about the programs. And this was the idea to have um, a home uh, where contemporary art, uh, dance uh, uh, performance and theater artists can, uh, can have their own programs. And now we will scroll. Can you scroll a bit more with the photos and come to the next? Yes, and uh, this is uh, what uh, this is the space in which we we kind of developed that um, Violeta mentioned uh, different programs. We could have do it in a continuity. We could uh, do the residencies. We could have uh, do different uh, production processes. We could have care about the artists and the artworks. And this was related with the uh, possibility to have this space. Just a short note on this. Unfortunately, uh, now due to pandemic crisis and also not a uh, efficient <laughs> political will, we had to stop the space and we just closed the space. But uh, we uh, are having the idea or the aim to continue uh, advocating for a space that would uh, include and enable uh, better working conditions for the artists, cultural workers in the field of contemporary arts and culture. I will continue with some of the programs that I mentioned before. So the programs Contemporary Culture and Cultural Policy, it's a program really dealing with uh, the research uh, and in the field of contemporary contemporary culture and uh, policies, but also in the uh, field of advocating or reflecting on the current conditions in culture, but also dealing with the question like governance culture, cultural working rights, etc. So I will mention a few of the programs realized this in the last year. Uh, when the pandemic started, uh, we invited 28 uh, col collaborators, professionals working in the field of culture from decision makers to artists, cultural workers, representatives of foundations to reflect on what is the current con conditions and how to deal, not to deal, how to adapt to the new situation of COVID-19, especially in the field of contemporary performing arts, which is really dependent of the audience and of the social and physical space. So we have uh, 28 uh, interviews with uh, different peoples coming from all around the world, from Russia to United uh, States of America. Uh, then we had the lectures uh, with in this program, three lectures um, dealing with different topics. Uh, Katja Preznik we have from Slovenia. Uh, she's uh, currently professor in uh, Buffalo University. Then we have Alvisa Favota from Italy and uh, practically from Italy, but lives in um, UK and uh, Dublin and Eleonora Montagna also from Italy, but she lives um, in France. So you can see the subjects that they were referring in their lectures. Uh, then the most recent thing that we organized in partnership with the uh, Faculty of Things That Can Be Learned, it was last Saturday, uh, and it was this uh, Act Agora, uh, Leave Your Old uh, Dispute Behind, which was really much dealing and reflecting of the current situation in culture and how, how to improve the uh, creation of uh, cultural policies uh, with um, uh, practicing, practicing the horizontal participation in the process of creation, so to be more uh, real and uh, more, more uh, real 
will base and uh, have results from their implementation, but not to be created top down as usually are. Uh, so last year we have very interesting contemporary uh, art and art spaces and residences cultural summit that gathers cultural workers and artists from Europe, uh, talking on two subjects, art spaces, what it means in different con contexts and how the commun they communicate also with the larger community and what it means a residential program in different contexts and how they can support the production of a local artist, not only the international one and the base for collaboration and development of new works. And uh, one of the most important thing that we did uh, after entering the Kino Cultura was organizing this very big international conference in the space, uh, uh, which was called Modeling Public Spaces uh, in Culture. And um, uh, also besides Kino Cultura, we are also dealing with other spaces and we had a very interesting project which was called Cultural Spaces for Active C active uh, citizens and this is one of the spaces co called railway building uh, in the um, uh, all cinema in the railway building this was this discussion how this space space can be reused with the participation of artists and citizens and the municipality and also again in partnership with faculty of things that can be learned so i will stop here and we go to the program of contemporary choreography and dance Okay, we can scroll the photos because uh, there we have different type of programs. Now you can see just uh, uh, some photos from the production. We mainly support uh, local artists because uh, what we have uh, the situation was the brain drain of the local artists, especially for the education, but also they were staying uh, later and uh, leaving and uh, uh, producing their arts in uh, Europe because of the better conditions. And in this space of Kino Cultura, we had the possibility actually to go through different programs and uh, work together with the artists in sense of we had this program which was called, can you just, I don't know what the photo goes. So uh, yes, here you can see uh, uh, it could be something very minimal. It was a guest performance by uh, Victoria Ilioska, who is uh, in uh, Gießen at this moment for her education, but also it's Alexander Georgiev, another artist that we continue working with. And then there were a couple of new artists uh, which we started working, Alexandra Petrusheva, etc. And it's uh, giving the possibility also that they could work with the professionals, such as dramaturgs, but also some theoreticians, but also producers and uh, go with them through the processes uh, of a production, involving them into, into the possibility to show their work, not only in Kino Cultura, but through the network elsewhere. This is the last project, uh, what I see here, the photo is what you can see the photo, failure is practice. We are doing it at this moment. It's also parallelly uh, happening now and it's beginning. And it's a collaboration with uh, Darko Dragicevic, an artist who is uh, based in Berlin, together with artists uh, from Macedonia, from Germany, uh, Slovenia, and other cities. They will do uh, uh, their project uh, online, but at the end they will uh, promote their artistic interventions uh, hybridly, let's say. And uh, this pro program, just briefly, because I, th I think we're already <laughs> speaking a lot, it's uh, Art Politics Institution and Body, and this is an ongoing also program, which uh, you know, we have a separate blog where it says much uh, m more about the program. And actually it was a program in two lines. One is discursive to develop this uh, discursive uh, uh, a program about and for performing arts, contemporary performing arts. And the second part is also to present some international work in process, but also uh, finished works of different artists. Here you can see some of these performances, but also there were different uh, collaborations, such as uh, different discursive programs, such as lectures, but also we had ongoing uh, collaboration and um, educational program called uh, Critical Practice Made in You, which was for 
uh, writers in dance and performance and etc cetera, etc cetera. this is a program that uh, we will continue doing because we think it's very necessary to have this continuity and also to have this possibility to invest into this theoretical discourse in sense uh, that this is not existing in, in the education and the faculties etc so the artists and the cultural workers can participate in them here music culture program that um, really wants to contextualize the conditions in which uh, musicians are working but also to create space for collaboration between um, different types of musician and experimenting that to produce something together one of these experimentation was done um, uh, in the frame of interactive music lab project that was supported uh, uh, from the Getty Institute, which uh, at the end finished with the, uh, also um, issuing um, a, a publication of the music that was created and it was live performance after the workshop between Macedonian and German electronic musicians. Uh, recently we had a lecture of Dr. Steven Melender dealing with the issues of uh, uh, how the transmission and creation of, cult of cre creative goods are in the era of digitalization and also supported three local artists uh, to present their work as a live act but also to talk a little about the conditions in which they are living faced with the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, this is the last uh, non-formal, uh, let's say, but uh, attend, uh, intending to become uh, uh, formal educational project curating in context uh, it's this project which we uh, shortly introduced at the beginning and uh, it's in collaboration as part of Erasmus plus uh, between DOC uh, uh, University in Stockholm a uh, faculty of drama arts in Zagreb in Croatia uh, Tanzfabrik in Berlin and Ice Lokomotiva we are trying through these two years to experiment and find the way how to develop a program that would enable our practices from the independent cultural scene with the perspective of uh, performing arts to become or to be part of the uh, academies and to be part of uh, educational programs we had uh, this first online uh, uh, edition but we are hoping that next year we will do it somewhere uh, close to the lake in Macedonia. And uh, it gained uh, around uh, 20 different uh, artists and curators. Uh, and uh, the next session is also planned for the next year in summer. And the last and not least, uh, this is the program of cool training. Uh, which we choose uh, to present and this is the program that we were doing in a continuity as part of uh, Kino Cultura and it was intended to engage the community or to give the free lessons of contemporary dance to the community at in, and uh, it has these two line of engagements first of all it engaged uh, students that uh, were studying pedagogy in contemporary dance, also artists who were teaching dance uh, and choreography, but also some of the participants which were dealing with other different body practices. So it's ongoing and we didn't stop even in the pandemic. We continue with online classes because we think it's very necessary to communicate uh, uh, with the com to communicate with the community in a certain programs which are directed only to them and this is one of them and yes uh, probably I don't we don't it's already 11 and uh, here we have uh, uh, the websites of Lokomotiv and Kino Cultura uh, those are uh, not I cannot share the screen because the violet is sharing the screen but however for more uh, information you can go to our website one is locomotiva.org.mk and the other one about the Kinokultura project space is kinokultura.org.mk. So 
thank you so much for being patient and listening this short but long presentation because uh, when you are kind of trying to uh, to to conceptualize something that it's already 20 years to be presented in 10 minutes or 20 minutes uh, it's a bit of difficult work so uh, yes uh, I would say that this is uh, now we are finishing uh, with this session uh, and uh, maybe I would like to just uh, announce the next sessions at 11.45 until uh, 1.15 we will have the uh, workshop by Philip Parr from England and it's called co-creation and this is a closed session for participants that could apply uh, uh, could apply and then uh, we will have an open session uh, which is from 3 to 4 30 and then it will be followed immediately by another session and uh, 3 to 4 30 is open discussion how do we act now we called it and it's a talk and discussion about the contemporary cultural policy in the Balkan region, very interesting one, uh, with uh, different um, uh, panelists from uh, all over ex-Yugoslavia, I would say. And also after that, uh, very important, uh, I would say, lecture, how to overcome cultural divisions in, li uh, in a liberal societies, that it's by our uh, Professor Milana Dragicevic Šešić. So I would like to welcome everyone to those sessions. Maybe Marta or anyone else, Jean Pierre, would you like to say something at the end? Or um, I just wanted to say that I really like your presentation. I think one of the uh, biggest um, um, rewards of working in international partners is being able to get to know you uh, not as, uh, only as people persons but also your work and how you deal with situation and uh, personally i'm really interested in how you did contemporary dance workshops online so maybe this is something we can <laughs> we can talk about later uh, if any of our uh, attendees, viewers uh, on Zoom would like to ask a question, you can do that via chat. But as I can see with the conversation here, um, there is also an option if somebody would like to uh, speak, we can give you access as panelists and you can um, share your thoughts if, if it's needed. So maybe I will just give you seconds if somebody would like to add something on, on chat or give us a sign that they would like to speak. If not, then uh, Jean-Pierre, some last words or we will, I, I, rec I always recommend within uh, this terrible pandemic time to get away from the computer for at least an hour now as the day is long and next sessions are very interesting. Uh, we welcome all of you to join us and now we have a break to stretch our legs and stay healthy. Thank you then. Thank you. Thank you.